Hello everybody, welcome to another Cheltenham Focus. Happy New Year, eight weeks away from the big one. Getting very, very excited now. Now since we last spoke, loads has happened. I was ill last week, so I apologise for that. Much better now. Um, looking to catch up on all the bits and pieces. And what we normally do in this video is I normally go to break down one race, um, go through and catch up a few bits and pieces that we've missed over the last couple of weeks, and then put up an anti-post bet. But this week, because we missed last week's episode, we're going to put up two anti-post bets for you. So keep stay tuned for that. Uh, the race and the horse that I want to talk about this week is Envoy Allen. Now there's been a lot of discussion. Does Envoy Allen stay well enough? Is he tiring? Does he just do enough in front? What is the deal with Envoy Allen and where should he go? Okay, so there was two races on the same card that I've used to compare some times. Um, one of those was obviously Envoy Allen's grade one victory at the weekend in the Lawless Nace. The other was Abraham, who won very impressively, I should add, in the 80 to 165 handicap. On the same day, now, Abraham's overall time was 4 minutes 54 seconds. He ran over 2 miles and 3 furlongs. One furlong shorter than that of Envoy Allen. Uh, he carried 11 stone, 10 pounds less than Envoy Allen. And uh, we're going to go through and break down some of his finishing efforts and compare them to Envoy Allen. The overall time of Envoy Allen's win was 4 minutes 57 seconds. Carried 11 stone, uh, 10 uh, ran over two miles, four furlongs. But I broke it down from five out. So hopefully these can be a little bit of a comparison despite the furlong distance, uh, extra distance that Envoy Allen won at. So from five out, seventh to the eighth, Envoy Allen ran at 36 seconds. Between the eighth and the ninth was 12 seconds. Between the ninth and the tenth was 35 seconds. Between the tenth and the eleventh was 14 seconds. And then from the last to the finish, Envoy Allen ran in 17 seconds. Now, we go over, we compare that to the 80 to 116 handicap that Abraham won. And from the 7th to the 8th, he ran in 38 seconds. Two seconds slower than that of Envoy Allen. From the 8th to the 9th, 13 seconds. One second slower than Envoy Allen's grade one. In the 9th to the 10th, 39 seconds. Four seconds slower than the grade one contest on the same day. And from the 10th to the 11th, he ran in 15 seconds. Again, one second slower than Envoy Allen did. From the 11th to the finish, this is where it gets really interesting. Abraham ran from the last to the finish line, and he did this on the bridle, I should add, coasting away. It was a steering job, to be honest with you. How he got a handicap mark of that is beyond me. But he ran in 15 seconds. Envoy Allen, from the last to the finish, was in 17 seconds. Now, from five out to the finish, Abraham's overall time from five out to the finish line was two minutes. Envoy Allen, one minute, 54 seconds. So, what does that tell us? Well, one thing that should tell us is that Abraham is definitely a well handicapped horse, but don't go over the top of, of Abraham. He's been parked to a mark of 116 now, eight pounds higher, but he was six seconds slower from five out to the finish than the grade one, as you would expect. You know, he did look really impressive, but to put that, put him in that sort of category, at uh, 4.5 lengths per second equates to around 27 lengths. So that's what you'd have to find to be in grade one company. So don't go over the top, but he is well handicapped. Keep an eye on him. But more importantly, what does that tell us about Envoy Allen? Well, if we go back to the Royal Bond over two miles, where Envoy Allen was two, 0.5 seconds quicker from the last hurdle to the finish line than any other race on the card that day. That included the likes of Janadil and the very useful juvenile Cerberus. He was three seconds quicker from two out to the finish uh, than any other race on the card. It was really impressive. The Royal Bond victory over two miles, in my opinion, was definitely his best performance to date. But Stepped up to two miles, four furlongs. He was two seconds slower from the last hurdle to the finish than as Abraham was um, in the, the 80 to 116 handicap. Now, they have run a furlong further. He is carrying 10 pounds more, but this is meant to be a superstar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do think that Envoy Allen is tiring at the end of his races. I don't think he's just doing enough. I think he is tiring. 
For now, my opinion would be that he should go to the Supreme Novice. I think he could be a real machine over two miles at this moment in his career. Um, the facts tell us that he's a powerful finisher over two miles, and I think that's what you need in a Supreme Novice hurdle. Now, we go back to the Royal Bond, and he actually made all the running that day. So it's very hard to make a case for him to say that he only does just does enough um, Oh, when he's in front, because it wasn't the case in the Royal Bond, because he was 2.5 seconds quicker than anything else on the card. However, Envoy Allen looked to be tiring over two miles four, and or I know everybody thinks, and, and they're probably going to go to the Ballymore, I think the right race for him is the Supreme Novice. That is my opinion. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Tell me if I'm talking a load of rubbish or not. But I feel like I've got in-depth enough to suggest that Envoy Allen was slower at the finish in the grade one at the weekend over two miles four uh, and was a much more powerful, striking uh, performer over two miles. That's my opinion. Where are we going to go next? Champ Fall. Let's get this out of the way quickly because it absolutely infuriated me. It, the reason it's infuriated me is because it's the preparation before Cheltenham. It's all going wrong. It's not going right. That's for sure. You do not want to go into the, back, into the RSA off the back of a fall. They're going to have to find another option for him now. Um, especially when the race was sewn up and won. I wish Barry would just give him a nudge and ask him, because every time Barry Garrett, he was asking him for a jump, he was finding. Now, when you leave the horse to make his own mind up, I think he's a bit of a nutcase. All the talented horses are nutcases, um, and he was just running down them. That, that's definitely going to have to improve if I'm going to have a hell of a bet on him for Cheltenham, which I want to do, because there is a fence at Cheltenham, three from home, I call it the danger fence, where they swing downhill and the pace starts to quicken. If he doesn't meet that right, he's got absolutely no chance. But fingers crossed, we see a much better performance with him. Hopefully, um, the jockey will uh, listen to this video. No, I don't. Um, Mossy Fenn, very strong at the finish in the Leamington Stakes at Warwick this weekend. Um, a second quicker three out to the finish than the two mile hurdle was on the same card. Very strong finish from Mossy Fenn. Would have no issues at all going up to three miles. Interesting recruit there. Two for gold, one Hampton Novices chase. And is now best price, 16 to one for the four miler. Or the national hunt chase, shall we call it, uh, in March. Now, the reason I want to bring this horse up is because OK Corral won the same weight race at Warwick last year. And was favourite for the race throughout all the build up to Cheltenham. In 2018, Miss Parfois was second in the four miler after winning this race. Black Hercules in 2016 went on from this race to win the JLT. Sergio's success uh, in 2015 was fifth in the National Hunt Chase and Corin Wood in 2014 also went and ran in that race. So it's definitely worth noting that two for gold may well go to the four miler. Figure on the Roof was an impressive, really impressive performer at Sandown um, a couple of weeks ago, very quick from three out to the line. Just looks a really nice horse. He's definitely got a huge future. He's eight to one for the Supreme Novice. He's 14 to one for the Ballymore. I think they're gonna go for whatever race they feel is the most winnable. In other words, they're gonna avo avoid this lad, Envoy Allen, in my opinion. We'll talk about side of the Berlin in a moment. Carefully selected is National Hunt, four miler, seven to one, fab. He's not even qualified for the race yet. Do not take that, that's mental. He's not even qualified for the race yet. He has to run over three miles and finish in the first four uh, before he can run in that race. He's 16 to one for the RSA if you like that, but I think the four miler is definitely where he should be going. Now he had things all his own way out in front. I thought he was a bit of a slow jumper if I'm being honest with you. Um, every time the pace quickened, he made a mistake. Uh, and he was the one doing the quickening, so I wouldn't like to see him in a field in behind, if I'm being honest. I think seven to one is the absolute ugh, dirt price. Andy Dufresne and Captain Guinness both went head to head on Sunday. Andy Dufresne is 16 to one for the Supreme, 16 to one for the Ballymore. I just don't know about the horse. I don't know what, what's going on with him. I'm not sure, entirely sure he puts it all in. Um, perhaps he wants a stronger run race. Perhaps the Supreme Novice will suit him. I'm not sure. He got the job done anyway. That's what good horses do. Uh, Captain Guinness is, I've seen worse bets at 20 to 1 for the Supreme than him. He was very keen at the beginning of the race 
Um, just just made a mistake at the last, and I think I think that might have may have made the difference in, in the finish. Um, Asterion Furlongs. That's the first time I've said that right. If that's right, twenty to one for the Ballymore, twenty five to one for the Albert Barlett. If you fancy him, he made near enough all the running that day. He jumped to his right. He's definitely going up in trip. So don't back him for any two mile races. He's going to be going up in trip. But I'd like to see that jump into the right hand side. Just ironed out before um, getting too serious with him. That is about all this week. Now I probably have missed a few bits and pieces. As you can expect, loads going on at the moment. But I have got a anti post battle. Got two. The first one is going to be this lad, Sire du Berlay. 10 to 1 for the Temps handicap final. Looking to win back to back races at Cheltenham for the back to back attempts. He's £4 lower. He's off the mark of 149 at the moment than when winning the race last year. Or then the mark he got after the race last year, sorry. He's £4 lower than that now. He was badly hampered through the race last year. Really badly hampered. I think he had plenty more in hand than the winning margins suggest. So I don't think his current mark of 149 will be beyond him, to be honest with you. They have got the storyteller in there, but I think between the pair of them, I think they've got the race sewn up, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, the second, to be fair, who we beat in that race last year is now £18 higher than that day. So, it's definitely strong form. The third is £5 higher. Um, he's only a pound lower, actually, the third, than Sire de Berlay is at the moment. And Sire de Berlay was giving him £4 on the day. And he was giving, to be fair, the second £9 that day. I think this has definitely been the target for him. He snuck in very well um, at the weekend at Warwick into fourth. He was, if you go back and watch the ride, um, a lot of people might have missed it, but Aidan Common was just just, just not asking for a lot. Just get there, get in fourth, uh, and we'll see what happens. But yes, Sire Du Berlay is going to be this week's 10 to 1 anti-post bet for the Potemps Handicap Network final. Now this is going to be my next anti-post bet. And I'm not sure, I was not sure if I was going to put this horse up or not. But I'm such a big fan of him. I've not seen anything else close to the quality of this horse that we've seen so far. And it's going to be 4-1 to one for the RSA champ. I'm going to get him on, get him on the team. Um, he's the most talented horse I've seen for a little while now. He is quirky. And I have got my reservations. But I love him to death. And I think he is definitely the winner of the RSA um, I think we're going to have a smaller field. Um, well, we do normally have a small field in the RSA, but I think that's definitely going to help him. I just can't see him being beat. There's nothing out there, I think, that's good enough to beat him. Um, I think Battle Over Doyen is his biggest danger at the moment, but I can't see that horse going well at Cheltenham. I'm not entirely sure he travels well um, on the basis of last year. And I just don't think he's that good. I don't think he's beaten that much. Whereas Champ has coasted through nearly everything he's done. Um, I can forgive him the fall. He jumped well throughout predominantly at Cheltenham. He's got a little bit of course experience now. I think 4 to 1 is a cracking price, if I'm being honest with you. But that is all. 4 to 1 champ, RSA, 10 to 1 side of Burley, Potemps Network Handicap Final. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Let's get the discussion started uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>